Hey there guys, welcome back to the dev channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use insert rows and delete rows in UI table view or UI table view controller. Let me open up the completed app, it's not that one. It's this one and I'm gonna show you, just wait two seconds and you'll see it inserts some rows, okay? So that's the insertion of rows and then to delete rows, I'm gonna show you how to use the swipe to delete kind of action here, okay? So you're also gonna learn how to do that and kind of just delete things properly and insert them properly. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to read these and then let's open up a new Xcode project, okay? So deletes rows at specified index paths and inserts them at specified index paths with animations, okay? Go ahead and create a new Xcode project. Let's just call this table view insert delete or whatever you want to call it, throw it into your code projects or whatever your directory is where you place your Swift projects or just uh, follow along and don't code if you don't want to. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just go into our viewcontroller.swift and I'm going to get rid of this background or not this background color, but this uh, <laughs> this comment. And uh, normally I give it a background color and just compile it just to see if everything's working, but we, we know it's working, okay? And I don't want to waste your time. So let's just go ahead and continue. All right, so first thing we need to do is change this UI view controller to a UI table view controller. So we don't really have to set up a UI table view. Again, this is gonna work for just normal UI table views as well. I'm just gonna use a UI table view controller to avoid a lot of nasty setup. All right, next thing we need to do is go into our app delegate.swift. And I like to set things up without storyboards so we can quickly set up our app in here by just saying window is equal to UI window. And this is three lines of code, so don't even worry about this. We're not even gonna leave the viewcontroller.swift file until after we write these three lines, okay? So window.make key invisible, and then window.root view controller is equal to view controller like that, okay? Not UI view controller, but just view controller. The reason I'm doing view controller is because that's the name of our class here in viewcontroller.swift, which is of type UI table view controller now, okay? So just to make sure everything's working, let's just say table view dot background color is equal to dot red. And then let's just recompile our application and then we'll be on our way, okay? Now, the first thing we need to do to kind of get our cells in here is declare data and basically register a cell. So what we need to do is we need to declare a cell ID in which we can register to our UI table view. Okay, the app's working, I'm gonna kill it. And the way we're gonna do this is by first declaring a constant and we're gonna say file private let cell ID is equal to cell ID, all right? I'm trying to look at the camera and write this at the same time, all right? And the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna declare an array of items, okay? Because we need some items for our collection or our UI table view, not UI collection view. So we're gonna say file private, and then we're gonna say var items is equal to an array of strings. Now, I made it a variable because we're gonna modify this when we insert and delete rows, okay? So what I want you to do now is I want you to put some items in here, and I'm just gonna say weekly uh, dev vlogs uh, on my other channel, okay? Because I have another channel in which I'm making dev vlogs now. I'll put the link in the description. And then I also have courses in the description. Okay, and then I'm not, I mean, I'm obviously plugging my stuff here, but I mean, I might as well, because we're just putting in strings, okay? That way I don't have to talk about it separately. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna register our cells, okay? So let's go ahead and go in here and let's say table view dot register, and then let's select the cell class and just say UI table view cell dot self, arrow to the right tab for reuse identifier, and that's where cell ID comes in. Go ahead and put that name right in there. Okay, now we can implement our methods, but before we can run any of those methods, we have to activate the data source. So we have to say table view data source is equal to self. Now, if you're coming here, I'm sure you understand what this all, all this setup is, but I'll go ahead and uncomment it for those of you who don't, and then I'll show you what happens when we compile it without that. Okay, so let's get a cell in there by first returning some, some item like the count. So we'll say uh, number of items number of rows, sorry, that's collection view. And then we'll just say return three, and then let's get our cell. So we'll say cell for item at, or cell for row at, again, that's collection views. And we'll say let cell is equal to table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier for index path. So we'll select that one. And then with the identifier, we're just gonna use cell ID. That way these both match and we don't have to worry about a typo or anything because if we have a typo, our application would crash, right? If I said cell IDs instead of cell ID on accident, it would basically not allow us to compile our app 
until that's running and it would tell us that that's broken, right? Now, normally if you just used a built-in string right there and right there, hard coded in, it's not gonna tell you where you went wrong. So it's good to have to use a constant for that. It's like why you use a constant for Redux actions if you're familiar with that. All right, we're gonna say for index path and we're just gonna pass in the index path that we received from this method. And then we're just gonna return this cell. And then let's go ahead and give it a text label. So we'll say cell dot text label question mark dot text is equal to LMI. And then we're gonna compile our application and then we're gonna run it and we're gonna see basically three cells that say, hello mate. And then let's see what we got. All right. So first thing I want to do is get rid. Oh, I guess the data source isn't required in a table view controller. Um, I wonder why I was thinking that it was crashing for me when I did it early, earlier and <clears throat> we'll see. I'll, I won't put that in there yet if we don't need it, but let's get rid of the background color. And the next thing I want you to do is instead of returning three, we kind of want these four items in here and we can easily get that variable or that value by saying return items dot count. Okay. The reason we have to do this is because when we modify our items data, when we insert rows or delete rows, we're not just going to know to return like three or four or just some number, right? We have to just get that from the items there. And that's an easy way to do it. Now let's go ahead and get the right text by just saying items at, and then index path dot row. Okay. So an index path has a row and a section. And if you're new to, if you're very new to table views, don't worry about section index path dot section. Just know that we have row because in this video, you don't really need to worry about sections. We don't do anything on sections. If you're curious about sections, and table views, check out my table view playlist and I'll show you tons of stuff on sections and advanced table views. And I, I even have a course in the description that's advanced table views, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into actually inserting and deleting, okay? Let's go ahead and recompile our application and see what it looks like. And then the next thing we'll do is we will provide some edit actions, okay? You know how when you swipe it and it deletes? Um, so let's do that, okay? Well, since we did methods, what we'll do is we'll do some inserts after that, okay? Okay, so that's our cells that has it all in there. Let's go ahead and overwrite another function called table view edit actions, okay? Edit actions for row at. Now you'll see there's two exact same methods. Now for the longest time until literally today, I was wondering why is there two? And then I realized, okay, if you're in a table view controller and hit return on that first one, it's not gonna overwrite it. But if you select the second one, it has it overridden. That's why there's two of them. I never caught that until now, but yeah. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and say let delete action is equal to UI table view row action because you'll see that it expects an array of UI table view row actions. Now the reason you would return an array is if you wanted to provide multiple. You might have seen in apps you can swipe and there's an edit and a delete for stuff like that. Okay. It says creates and returns a new UI table view row action object. Let's just go ahead and hit return and then let's say style is dot and then we're just gonna say destructive. Okay. Because we want it to be a red delete. The title is just gonna be delete put that in a string and then the handler, we're just going to hit return and then we're going to say action tab index path with a lowercase I. And then we're just going to say print index path. Okay. And we will put a string in front of this and say, trying to delete index path. Okay. And then a colon, bam, bam. Okay. Now we wouldn't even really need this because you'll see we have index path right here and it's going to be the same one except for, no, never mind. That doesn't make sense because this, this uh, closure is going to run when we swipe it and this index path is going in when we, when we have our app compile and everything. All right. So now all we have to do is return our delete action within an array. So make sure you wrap that with brackets and we're good to go. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to throw in another edit action just as a bonus. I just thought about that. It's super simple and I'll just show you how to do it real quick. All right. So let's go ahead and see what our app looks like. Looks the same, but now when you swipe, you'll see you have this delete button, which is really convenient. You'll see at the bottom, whichever one you push, it will basically say the index path, right? Now I assume you know what an index path is. If you don't, go watch my other videos. I don't want to slow everybody else down here. I just kind of want to explain things with deleting and inserting rows and we haven't even got to it yet. So let's go ahead and jump into that finally, okay? So now we're in a solid spot to actually insert and delete our rows. Let's start with deleting since that's the path we're on. Let's get rid of this and then this is the flow, okay? There's no really, there's nothing's gonna really tell you within Xcode how to do this the proper way, right? You're just gonna think, okay, I need to delete the data and then reload the data. So one way is to say, okay, well, I wanna say items at index path dot row is, and then say like, let's say items dot remove, I'm sure is the function at int, and then you pass an index path dot row. I've been doing a lot of JavaScript lately, so I'm getting thrown off here some every now and then. But yeah, so you might think do that and then say, okay, well, table view 
dot reload data, right? This is probably what you've done before. And then you're probably reaching a point where you're like, okay, I need to figure out how to do this the right way, right? That's exactly what happened to me. Maybe that isn't what happened to you. Maybe that's just what happened to me. But like when I was first learning iOS development, I'd always just kind of figure things out because I'm so impatient. And then I was like, okay, I got to go learn how to do this the right way. But yeah, you'll see now when we delete it, you'll see it works, except for it looks so automatic and kind of gross, right? Like it just doesn't look good. And you want that smooth animation you see in other apps, right? So I'm gonna show you just how to do that, exactly how to do that. So let's go ahead and let's say, let's do this. Let's say we'll remove it still, but instead of reload data, we're gonna delete a row, okay? So we're gonna say self.tableView, or we'll just say table view because we're getting the table view in the function, so it's pure, right? Technically, this isn't pure. I wonder how you, I guess pure functions isn't a thing in Xcode or in Swift protocol oriented programming, but we'll say table view dot remove index paths. Sorry, it's remove rows. Wait, what the? Delete rows, yeah. Delete rows, it says delete the rows by a specified array of index paths with an option to animate the deletion. Hit return, an array of index paths, just in case you want to delete multiple. I'll show you how to add in multiple at the end of this video. And we're gonna delete the index path, right? And then just dot fade. You can mess around with the, the animation options. I don't think that's important for me to show. I think that's something you can kind of mess around with. I think you're really here just for me to show you kind of the logic behind this because it might've been really confusing. You might've not known, right? You might've even tried delete rows before items and it crashed. And then now you're here and all you have to do is swap them. But yeah, go ahead and now swipe and delete one. You'll see it deletes and it's super clean, right? It looks good. If you hard swipe it, it'll just delete it, okay? So that's how you delete rows. Let's go ahead and let's insert rows. Now let's think about this. We don't really want to just insert them right as we open the app because then we won't really see it, right? And then we don't really want to spend another 20 minutes writing out a UI to add items. So what we're gonna do is basically just delay something and have it insert some data after a couple seconds. Okay, so exactly like this in the completed app. Okay, that's not the completed app. I thought it was. It doesn't matter though. So what we'll do is we will just do it. So let's go ahead and get rid of this comment. <clears throat> if you're if you added a table view manually and you didn't use UI table view controller, you it's likely that you have to use table if you're and if your methods aren't running, you have to use table view dot data source is equal to self. Okay. Now that I've said that, let's just go ahead and say let's create, let's say perform, and then you'll see we have this uh whatever it's called. Okay function constructor. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word. And then you'll see it says after delay at the end. Okay. That's what we're looking at. Let's go ahead and hit return and then go ahead and say for selector, hashtag selector self dot, and we'll just say delay. And then we're going to hit tab and then say nil for width. And then after delay, let's just say two seconds. And then let's go create this delay function. So we're going to say file private at, a, no, we'll have to say objective C first. We'll say at objective C func at Objective-C file private func. The reason you have to say at Objective-C is because it's a selector and uh, however Swift programming or however X, they set it up over at Apple, it it's basically requires it to be exposed to Objective-C. So whatever that means. But we'll say obje at Objective-C file private func and we'll say delay. Let's go ahead and close that off. And then we're just gonna print trying to add in, trying to add some items. Go ahead and recompile your application and you can feel free to give this function a more meaningful name. I don't think it really matters because I think you understand what we're doing in here. If I was thinking about it harder, I would have said something like insert some rows. I don't know. But yeah, now you'll see after two seconds, it says trying to add some items. Now, even I missed that because I forgot what we were doing. So let's just recompile it and then you're going to see that it prints after two seconds trying to add some rows. So wait for it in the console, in the output or whatever they want to call this trying to add some items, okay? So we're gonna add it after two seconds. Let's go ahead and get rid of that print statement. And then what we have to do is basically just come up with the index path and then follow the same exact method here. We just have to add in our data and then we have to insert the rows, okay? So let's say let, and we'll say what we need to do, yeah, we need to get the index path. So let's just say let index path, uh, let's say another index path, because we're gonna add two. So we're gonna say, so we're gonna say new index path and then we'll say is equal to index path. So make sure it's with a capital I because it's a constructor and then select the row one. Item is for is for collection views, but it will work the same, okay? All right, next thing you wanna do is you want to say for row and the way we're gonna get the row is basically just getting the item count. So we'll say items.count. Now, if you're confused and you're as ADD as I am, what you'll see is you'll we're getting this from items, okay? So we're gonna say, and that was a joke. 
I'm not AD. All right, so items.count, and then we'll hit tab, and then the section's gonna be zero because we're not messing with sections, okay? Don't worry about it. All right, next thing we'll do is we have our index path, so now all we need to do is add the data and then insert the row. So we'll say self.items.append, and I'm gonna say string, and then I'm just gonna say advanced UI table view course, and then I'm going to, I'm gonna say advanced UI table view course in description below, because yeah, I got one down there if you wanna take it. All right, and then next thing we're gonna do is insert the row. So let's say self.tableView. Now we're gonna use self because we don't have it in a function. Before we used table view because we received it in the function. We're not receiving table view here, so we'll just say self.tableView. And then we'll say dot insert rows, and then it says insert rows in the UI table view at the collections identified by an array of index paths with an option to animate the insertion. Go ahead and provide an array and throw in the new index path, and then let's say dot fade. Let's go ahead and recompile our application and see what we're given on the screen after two seconds, okay? So it's compiling, it's compiling, it's still compiling, and guacamole. All right, so two seconds later, bam, inserts it. Let's go ahead and do another. Let's copy the self.items.append, and we'll just say, bro, you gonna watch my vlogs or what, homie? All right, and then <clears throat> what we have to do is insert the rows, okay? Because let's go ahead and compile it and see what happens if we don't insert the in new index path, another index path, okay? Basically, nothing's gonna happen, but might as well compile it and see just, if, just in case you're curious. And bam, we it crashes, okay? So let's go ahead and read it, and it says, yeah, blah, 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 it valid numbers, rows, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right? You've probably seen that before. So what we need to do is go back to our view controller.swift, and then we just need to create the new index path. So we'll say let newer index path is equal to index path, and then we just want to select the row one again, say items.count plus one, and then section zero, and then we just need to throw it into our insert rows right here with our array, newer index path, okay? Now when we recompile our application, you're gonna see that it adds in two items at the same time after two seconds, which is really dope, and it just, it just works great, and I hope you learned something, okay? So two seconds, and bam. All right, so I hope you learned something. If you're interested in really mastering your table view skills, now would be the time to go to the description and right, you're, you're good. All right, so <clears throat> that's it for this video. I hope you're enjoying my content and uh, just leave comments down of what you want and I'll build them. Like I build these videos based on user requests in the comment section, okay? And yeah, please leave a like and please subscribe. See you in the next video.